Hello everyone, welcome back again to uh, Plax's 3D Shallow Foundation course from uh, Theory to Practice. In the last lesson, we shortly talked about the Plax's uh, 3D and general uh, applications in geotechnical engineering that can be performed using this software. And also we shortly talked about uh, some different types of constructive models. In uh, this lesson, I will shortly talk about the shallow foundation and some different types of shallow foundation and the theory of bearing, ultimate bearing capacity of the foundation also the different types of shear failure in the soil uh, shallow foundation uh, can be defined as a kind of foundation that is constructed near uh, the ground surface to support uh, a structure. They are generally considered shallow foundation when uh, the depth of the foundation uh, to the width of the foundation ratio is less than one. So the depth of the foundation is the distance from the bottom of the foundation to the ground surface and width of the foundation is a short dimension of the foundation. Uh, there are some uh, types of shallow foundation <clears throat> one of them is isolated footing or split footing this is a very common type of shallow foundation it can be circular it can be square or rectangular and uh, this type of foundation uh, generally used when the ground uh, has uh, enough strength and enough bearing capacity and uh, also used for uh, lightweight structures Another type of foundation is strip footing. This uh, type of uh, foundation has a very uh, long length uh, compared to width. So it is generally used for bearing walls or retaining walls or sometimes for a row of a column, a row of a columns. Another type of foundation is called uh, strap footing or cantilever footing. Uh, this is generally used when a foundation has to be uh, constructed near a property line so uh, the column cannot be uh, uh, put in the center of the footing so this uh, results in an eccentric load uh, to solve this problem uh, a beam is constructed between uh, the footing near the property lines and the other footings to uh, counterbalance uh, the moment uh, also Another type of foundation is called a raft foundation. This type of foundation is used when uh, the ground <coughs> has a weak uh, strength or a low bearing capacity or when the loads from superstructure is uh, high enough and it uh, supports a, a number of columns or maybe some wall, shear walls as well. Uh, so what is the ultimate bearing capacity of shallow foundation uh, during this uh, <clears throat> during designing the shallow foundation uh, this is uh, the most important uh, things that the engineer consider about which are the ultimate bearing capacity of the foundation so this is the maximum amount of pressure that uh, soil can withstand before it fails or uh, collapses in general uh, there are three types of uh, bearing capacity failure uh, modes that uh, have been observed uh, in the laboratories or in the field. Uh, one of them and the most common is a general shear failure. A uh, general shear failure happens uh, generally in low compressibility soils with uh, high or moderate strength or in saturated clays under a rapid loading. Uh, this type of uh, shear failure uh, characterized by uh, distin distinct or abrupt failure surface noticeable on low displacement curves and we can, as we can see in here uh, uh, after when the load is increased increased and the settlement also start to decrease but at some point the abrupt of the load occurs and the load starts to decrease while the settlement starts to increase also this type of uh, failure marked by a bulge near the footing as we can see in here when shear failure happens some of the soil goes upward near the foundation so this is also an indicate of the general shear failure 
The second uh, shear failure of the uh, uh, soil is called a local shear failure. In this type of uh, shear failure, clear shear surfaces form uh, under the footing but become less distinct near the ground uh, surface. As we can see in here, it's uh, unlike the general shear failure, the uh, small amount of uh, soil or bulge happens near the footing. Also, unlike uh, the abrupt collapse in general shear failure, local shear failure involves gradual sinking of the footing without a sharp distinct failure. As we can see in here, it is gradually, uh, the settlement gradually increases uh, and load as well. And we cannot uh, see the exact point when uh, the failure happens or when, uh, it, uh, when the load starts to decrease. Uh, the third and final uh, shear failure of the soil is called punching shear failure. This type of uh, failure happens in very high uh, compressible soils like very loose sands or weak clays and uh, sometimes where a very strong soil layer overlays a weak one uh, under a slow and drained loading conditions. Uh, this type of Shear failure characterized by uh, important uh, settlement and poor, poorly defined vertical shear surfaces. So uh, since uh, in this type of shear failure the uh, soil is highly compressible and uh, a large amount of settlement is expected. And this uh, failure mode shows a minimal or no bulging at the ground as we can see in here. There's no uh, bulging near the ground surface. Uh, so with the gradual development evident uh, from a continuous increase in load uh, on the load settlement curves. And as it can be seen in here, uh, the load uh, continuously increases and the settlement decreases. So this was the uh, second uh, lesson from the uh, Plaxus uh, 3D Shallow Foundation course from a theory to practice and thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next lesson and in the third lessons of this uh, course we will uh, start by a simulation of a shallow foundation uh, under different loading condition using Plaxus uh, 3D.